Well, let's begin with a very brief introduction to uh, why we learn Latin. Uh, in short, we learn Latin so that we can read things that are written in Latin, of course. Um, and why are things that are written in Latin important? Well, they're important because Latin became the language that was the language of Western civilization, of Western Europe, for well over a thousand years. And it became that way, of course, because the Roman civilization uh, that arose in central Italy on the Po River eventually conquered all the lands from Great Britain to, uh, to uh, the borders of Iran. So all those countries, so let's just go around, around the horn, we should get a, a map of Europe here, a map of the Mediterranean world. Mediterranean world. Oh, let's see a good one. There's a fine one. So if we look at this map of the Mediterranean world, uh, up here is Britain, not on our map, but Britain, Portugal, Spain, France, Switzerland, uh, portions of Germany, Italy, all of the former Yugoslavia, which today are all these crazy countries, Croatia, Montenegro, etc., Hungary, Romania, Bulgaria, Turkey, Syria, Iraq, Jordan, Palestine, uh, Israel, Egypt, Libya, Algeria, Tunisia, Morocco, every one of those countries, Greece, forgot to say Greece, every one of those countries was the Roman world in the year uh, 117 AD. Uh, tr traditionally, that's uh, the, the high point of the Roman Empire. So 117 years approximately after our Lord was born in Bethlehem, every single one of those countries was Roman territory. Amazing. So Latin was spoken, uh, at least by the upper classes, at least by all the businessmen in every one of those countries. Um, so that's why Latin becomes so important. Uh, and not only the language, but the customs of Rome, uh, Roma in, in Latin, uh, the, the customs of Rome, the culture of Rome spread to all these places. And so after the apostles go out from Jerusalem and spread the message of our Lord Jesus Christ around the world, and eventually the Roman Empire then, in uh, uh, you know, the, around uh, the year 312, 315, um, uh, the Edict of Milan finally in, three, uh, in 312, and then um, Constantine making, Emperor Constantine making Christianity the preferred religion of the Roman Empire, and then finally his, uh, I think it's his great-grandson, Theodosius I, uh, in 387, makes Christianity the religion of the Roman Empire. All of a sudden, this whole world is uh, the Western Christian world. Now, later, the Roman world, of course, breaks down, and these individual countries, as we think of them today, begin to break off, um, but still everybody in Spain, everybody in France, everybody in Germany, England, Italy, Hungary, they all spoke Latin. Latin was the international language. And to this day, there are you know tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands of, of uh, millions of pages uh, of important Latin works that have never been translated. Uh, so, learning Latin gives you access to the history of the Western Christian world, gives you access especially, especially uh, to, uh, to Christian texts. To, in fact, I think I mentioned there in that first video that that's what I do on a daily basis. Here's a page of Gerhardt that I, uh, that I translated today. Um, and so still today, Latin is, uh, you know, there are wonderful works in Latin that have yet to be translated. And of course, there's no substitute for reading uh, something in its original language. Something's always lost in translation. So it's very important to learn that. Um, and we should also say that Spanish, French, Italian, Romanian, um, the, the, the Portuguese, these are called the Romantic languages, not as in Romance, but as in Rome. These are languages are all, in fact, Latin. They're just local dialects of Latin 
that have grown into their own languages. So by learning Latin, you'll have a much easier time learning Portuguese, Spanish, French, Romanian, etc. And likewise, if you studied French or Spanish in high school, uh, you'll find many, many similarities with Latin and your, uh, your path will be much smoother than those perhaps who are starting uh, with Latin as their, as their first foreign language. So that's a, a very brief introduction to uh, why learning Latin is important. Uh, we, could, we could take a look at a couple more things here. This is Emperor Augustus, by the way. We're just looking at him to begin our class. Um, the government of the United States is based on uh, how the Roman government was set up. We'll have time to talk about this as we go through the class, kind of piece by piece, but uh, are the division of our government into an executive branch, a legislative branch, and a, and a judicial branch. This is all based on how the Romans did it. And the Romans themselves did this very self-consciously. They wanted the best of monarchy in the legislative branch. They wanted uh, the best of democracy in the legislative branch. They wanted the best of oligarchy in the judicial branch. Um, and they assembled how they govern themselves in that way very deliberately. And the United States, and before them, the, the British Empire, the, the history of English law, and before that, the history of Christian monarchy and Christian law in the Middle Ages, all this grows out of this Roman world that lasts from, uh, well, the city of Rome was founded in 753 BC. The city of Rome falls, uh, and in Western Europe devolves into uh, all these kingdoms. So Rome falls in 476 AD 476. So the city of Rome itself stood as, uh, as an independent commander of empire for you know, approximately a thousand years. Um, it, and there the Middle Ages began then in 476 and France becomes France and Switzerland becomes Switzerland and Germany becomes Germany. In the, in the succeeding uh, generations. Meanwhile, remember, because all, all of these countries were Roman territory. So in the meanwhile, after 476, here in what is today Istanbul, at the time was Constantinople, uh, this becomes the new seat of the Roman Empire. They still called themselves Romans, even though most of the people in the Eastern half of the empire spoke Greek as their primary language, still called themselves Romans, and that empire stood until 1453 when the Islamic Turks finally conquered it. Um, of course, Islam arises in the 7th century, and uh, Islam, well, we can get pretty far afield today and talk about how Islam arises in the Arabian Peninsula uh, in the 7th century, conquers all these Christian lands all the way around into France defeated uh, by Charles Martel at the Battle of Tours in 732 AD, drives the Muslims back to Spain. The Spaniards finally kicked the Muslims out in 1492. That is why Columbus sailed the ocean blue that year, um, etc. So it, it, all this history is tied in. The history of our world, the world we live in, the governments we live under, the culture we have, the language we speak, it's all built on this foundation of the Roman world and then the interaction of that Roman world as it becomes Christian and that heritage is passed down through the centuries. So again, this is the most, the briefest of, of overviews of the importance of Latin and how it provides one of the foundations of the Western world. But it's a good start and as we go through Wheelock we'll have opportunity to uh, expand on these comments.